everyone. Hello. Welcome to our van. This is our van, Lynn. If you didn't know, you probably already knew. So we've been asking you guys over the last couple of days if you have any questions for us. Tonight we're going to do a Q&A video, just random questions. Yes. We've been getting a lot more questions in the comments of our videos lately, um, so we thought that this would be a good time to kind of share a bit more about ourselves with you, because um, I know that we do have a good number of new people following us, which is awesome. Thank you guys so much, um, and we're excited to take you on this journey with us. Absolutely. We have some very varying questions, and we haven't really gone over them yet. So. Yes. Um, <laughs> Do you want to, do you want to go first? You can go first. You got it. All right. Some of these came from Instagram, um, which if you're not following us on Instagram, you should be because Jess does the Instagram with her photography and it's way better than these videos. So you should get on that. So first question is what advice you'd give to someone starting a van conversion? My advice to somebody starting a van conversion is to have a professional van builder build out the electrical and water components of your van. That's also my advice. <laughs> um, how has COVID impacted your travel plans for the future? Um, right now, I think everything is just up in the air. Um, there's so much uncertainty as for when we'll be able to leave here. Um, we're currently in New Jersey, which is where my parents live. Um, and they're still at the stay at home order. Um, there's no end date for that that's been set yet. Um, so we had originally planned to travel the northeast of the US this summer. And right now we don't know what that's gonna look like if we're going to be able to do that. Um, we might be able to get a little bit up into New England or I'm not sure. Yeah. Um... So we'll see, I guess. Um, yeah, it's all just kind of playing by ear right now. It's a fun question. Are you related or distantly related to anyone famous? Not that I know of. <laughs> the answer is no. We're both pretty um, normal people, unfortunately. But I love that question. That's so, yeah, that's such a lame answer. But we're not. <laughs> not that I know of. What is one thing that you agree to disagree about? without getting personal. Yeah, okay. Agree or disagree on? Oh, we disagree about the best variety of apple. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. so true. We buy two different kinds of apples in this van. I choose the Honeycrisp apples. They are by far superior to any other apple. No. <laughs> no. I'm all about the pink ladies. So, there you have it. That was good. That was a good one. Yeah, that's good. Okay. okay. What is your favorite thing about each other? Oh, oh, babe. Do you want to go first? Is that Sarah plays all the instruments? She is such a good musician, and I'm so. I just love it. I just melt a little bit when she plays something. Mm. Yeah. My favorite thing about you is. This is like cliche, like a lame answer, but like definitely probably your heart because you just feel like you're so loving and caring and kind and you, yeah, you're just such a nice person. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You're also a nice person, but I like I your music. not <laughs> as nice as Jess's. Yeah. What other designs did you have for your bus? All right. Well, first things first, we live in a van. Um, I see I'm just not as nice. She's not. That's true. You're not as nice. Um, what other designs did we have? Do we have any other designs? Um, I mean, we, we didn't really change this one. We had the general idea of what we wanted and we added things along the way. Like this wall was added in midway through the design. Um, yeah. Certain things were like adjusted, but no, we had had like napkin sketches of what we wanted for a very long time. What's the longest you've gone without sleep and why? In high school and like doing those like lock, lockdown, lockout things? Lockdown, I think is the thing. Lock, I don't know. Whenever, when your class would like go to the gym and basically like have a sleepover 
together in you high school. You disgusted by the very idea of it right now. Because <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, I would never, ever do that now. Like, well, I would, but I would go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, and we just didn't sleep. We legitimately, I, the, I remember one year that we did it and I did not go to sleep. Yeah, so, I mean, it was like more than a day. Yeah, I think I definitely had some long nights in college, but the most recent one I can remember would be I'm a birth photographer and one of the first, maybe the first mom that I ever um, photographed her birth, she she was in the hospital for like 36 hours or something like that and I was there for the entire time and I didn't go there like in the night. It was, it was one night in the hospital, but I was awake for almost 48 hours, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Good on ya. <laughs> Where will be your next adventure? Um, TBD right now. We have some like small things planned, like just like in the surrounds. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're not, I'm not entirely sure. Like Jess mentioned, we'd like to do New England over the summer. Um, we'll see. Emily wants to know how we both get so cute. I sent her a gift for that. <laughs> when are you getting married and are you recording it for YouTube? We are hopefully getting married on October 19th of 2020. Fingers crossed. Um, that's still the plan. And we have not decided if we're going to record it for YouTube. I think, I think we'll do some kind of recording. I don't know if it'll be like the full day recorded, but we might take a couple videos. Yeah, I don't know yet. Um, maybe we could have friends take videos and things like that. Yeah. Edit them. Yeah, I don't know. I have to give it some thought. We want to enjoy it, but yeah, you've mentioned a couple times you think it would be really great if I, if I videoed the day. Um, We'll see. Yeah, just see how you're feeling. I'll probably decide like that that morning. <laughs> we don't honest. have a we don't have plans to have a videographer though. Yeah. So. Yeah. Just us. Someone's asked where we're going to travel for our honeymoon. We don't have plans to take a quote unquote honeymoon right now. Um, we if everything goes according to plan and we get married in October in Austin, um, we will likely pop back up here for um christmas Chris for thanksgiving and christmas um and then we talked about maybe trying to get out to like baja and maybe we might go somewhere in mexico next winter yeah. and that would probably be like our honeymoon um i don't know yeah we'll see do you think you'll be afraid to travel due to the virus when all the stay-at-home orders are lifted? I think we have the ability to travel a lot easier than a lot of other people do because we can travel without going to public bathrooms. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to have refrigerated food in here. Mm -hmm. um, it's just gas that we would need to get. So we do have it pretty, pretty set as far as traveling goes. I don't think we were planning to go to any other cities or areas like that, aside from Austin. Um, mm -hmm. So I think as long as things are lifted and open, we should be okay to travel. Yeah. Um, I think that will we be afraid to travel? I mean, it's definitely like we are taking this virus very seriously and taking all of the necessary precautions um, that have come because of it. Um, Neither one of us want to get sick. Neither one of us want to pass it along to somebody. Um, so, I mean, I'm, like, optimistically hesitant, I guess. Um, but, yeah, like Jess said, um, we can travel a lot easier because we're self-contained. Um, so, it might just change the way that we travel. Um, when, we tra when we went out to Austin and like down south this past time we spent so much time in cities um going to coffee shops going yeah. to gyms like basically living normal life somewhere else yeah. and living in our van um but I think the future will look different um it'll probably be more 
like camping uh, camping yeah yeah parks and things like that yeah. was getting insurance on lynn pretty easy um it actually was fairly easy considered because we already had heard a rumor that state farm would be good to go for insurance sarah has usa um and they did not cover the van as we needed it to be covered um but we did check with them and some other companies i have state farm insurance for my photography business so i ended up just calling my agent and she hooked us right up it was pretty straightforward yeah definitely i would highly highly recommend them um they're the only company that i could find i called about five or six different companies um none of which would insure the van um given its modifications and the amount of money that we put into it and wanted to have covered um, under the terms that a licensed RV outfitter did not build our van for us. Um, which, I mean, it makes sense. Um, yeah, it, it makes sense. Um, but super great of State Farm to do that. They basically underwrite new policy um, anytime somebody needs this. And they did that for us. And so they have insured the van for the amount that it costs and the amount that we put into it. Thumbs up. <laughs> do you have a post address or do you get all your mail as email? Oh, I wish we got all of our mail as email. It would just make life so much easier. Um, Except for like postcards and things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we like just some, I'm, I, you like some mail, I don't know. Anyway, um, we do have a PO box. People want to know how we met. The people want to know. The people want to know. I told Sarah we should do a whole video about our love. You should tell it, tell her in the comments that we should do a whole video about our love. I did just unearth on my old external hard drive some videos from very early on in our relationship. In our love. We were so <laughs> in love. Oh my gosh. Sarah and I met in college. Yes, we met at university. Um, that, I mean, that answers the question. That answers the question. Yeah. We'll have to make a whole separate video. Tell her if you want it. Um, yeah, next month we will have been together for seven years. The most powerfully magical. The most powerfully magical <laughs> number. <laughs> oh my gosh, binge moon Harry Potter anymore. All right, somebody wants to know. They asked a lot of questions in here, so I'm just trying to skim them out. Mm -hmm. Knowing that we haven't been at van life very long, do you believe you would enjoy a tiny home in suburban area or a cabin in the mountains more than van life? I think they are totally different things and yeah. I would love both of those other options as well as this van. So we're doing the van for now. We are kind of driving around and seeing the country and maybe scoping out where we want to live. We're not going to live in this forever, probably not more than a couple of years. And if we find that place that we want to live, then we probably will get a small house. Um, okay. What limitations have you found with the space? Is it difficult on your relationship to be confined to the same space all the time? I think that's a genuine question. I think he's asking because they might be. Yeah, so this a van. person and his partner um, are looking into doing van life. So. Yeah, so these are real questions and ones that we didn't consider too much before we set out because we had already spent so much time together in a small space in our tent. Yeah, so we um, have lived, <laughs> our relationship is interesting, I guess. So we live together um, in a like 200 square foot, not even room, mm -hmm. like a, a bedroom of a, an apartment together before we were dating, um, along with some other friends from college. We all had this apartment together. Um, so our relationship started out with us living in a room together, um, and we went from there to, we moved into a 700 square foot apartment, just the two of us, um, and then from there to the house that we have, which is 1100 square foot, I think, um, and during that time, living in that house, we both, for part of the time, we both worked from home. Mm -hmm. for like two years, two and a half At years. At least two years, yeah. Um, and then from that to hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, where we lived in a 
20 square, I don't know how many square foot our two person tent is. I don't is. think it was even 20. I don't know, yeah. yeah, it was like five square feet or something. Anywho, a two person tent for three months. Um, and now I live in this van. So, yeah. Everyone's relationship is different. Um, but. Give me your real feelings. But we've always lived together. We've always spent a lot of time together. Um, I know that some, some relationships, you know, maybe you don't, don't live together. Maybe you don't spend that much time together, but for us, this has always been our reality. So it's never really been, um, like a problem. Obviously there are challenges that come with living in such a small space. Sometimes I would just like go sit in the cab and close the door <laughs> and like, that's when you know things are rough. Have my like she closes the cab door. Five minutes of alone time. <laughs> but like, yeah, yeah. There definitely isn't enough space for two people in here. If you're upset, yeah. Like you're either gonna face it or you're gonna leave. And I think we did have an argument during like the beginning of the coronavirus things where there wasn't anything that was open, and we had an argument, and we were both in here. And I remember thinking, like, there's nowhere for us to go. Yeah. So I would sit on the bed, and you would, like, sit here on this bench. We would be, like, ten feet away. But it kind of makes you work it out, too. Yeah. Yeah. What are five things you wish you had built slash done slash decided differently to your van? Five things. Five things. Oh, man. Um, I wish... Go. That the van... We had figured out the back part of the van a little bit better with the batteries and the water. Yeah. Yeah, our wish. garage space is, needs some work. We're going to work on that. We are adding some adjustments, so hope maybe you'll see them in the future. But I wish we had put a lock on this table so that way when it was up, it couldn't accidentally fall down. Yes. Um, That's two. Oh, I wish that we had gotten lithium batteries. I wish that we had known about lithium batteries. <laughs> I think lithium batteries for van life, it, we, we did this last summer, we built the van last summer. Mm -hmm. They weren't that new then, but they have become much, I see them everywhere now. Yeah. And when I was researching it like last early summer, like I didn't even come across them at all. Maybe mm -hmm. I saw like one thing about these really expensive batteries and I was like, no way. Um, but there's so, like, I just wish that we had got lithium batteries, um, yeah. mainly for the weight. And for the size. And for the size, yeah, size and weight. Um, just, like, invested in that. But also, like, we didn't have the money <laughs> to, to, to do that. We didn't have the yeah. money for, like, a, a whole, like, Victron system or, um, yeah. Battleborn system. So, um, I mean, we would have had to sacrifice a lot of other things for that. So, yeah. yeah. With the downtime, is there anything your van, with your van, you would like to rebuild slash test prior to heading out on the road again? Yeah, we have already done a lot of little projects, um, like did some recalking in the bathroom, um, cleaned everything. Um, we need to empty the compost from our toilet, um, mm -hmm. and we are taking our van next week um up to our friends at frank design company who built this van with us to redo the garage that's the goal that is the goal yeah <laughs> there's some other things that have to be done as well um we're gonna like waterproof the plumbing section um i can't think of any we're building a puppy gate building a puppy gate for the spot under the bed. Yeah. Um, so we definitely have some projects lined up in the next couple of weeks. Those are going to be in our weekly videos. Somebody's asked a handful of questions about, um, the music in our videos. Um, please do a video of Sarah's music. Um, would you consider doing a video slash slideshow of Jess's pictures and Sarah's music? What instrument can Sarah's play? Love the music in your videos. I love the music too. Thanks. That's really sweet of you to say that. <laughs> um, 
And you're definitely my number one fan. No thanks. Outside of you. Okay. You're like the number zero. <laughs> you know, like, just, you know. Alright, anyway. Sarah can play anything. You could just Not make an true. instrument right now, and I bet she could play it. Sarah can play the guitar, obviously. She can play the piano, like a boss. She can play the violin. Hadn't played it for ten years, picked it up the other day, and played me a song, so she's amazing. She can play the drums, the ukulele, which is like the same thing. You can play... Um, she harmonizes really well. I play the bass. The bass. There you go. I've never heard you play the bass, but... It's because I don't have one right now. Anything else? <laughs> no. I don't think so. Jenna, you've also asked if you can get my music anywhere. Um, not really. <laughs> no. Um, I was very, like, I had a CD that I put out, um, like, pre-Spotify years back in college. So, if you want it... She'll mail it to you. Just send me your address and we'll <laughs> mail it to you. You have to have a way to play it, though, so bust out your <laughs> CD player. What made you go with the Mercedes over the Ford slash Ram option? So this is in reference to our van. Our van is a Mercedes Sprinter. Um, it's an extended, so it is a 170 wheelbase. Um, there are two competitors to that. This is for anybody that's not um, that versed in the van world. Um, you have the Ford Transit and you have a Dodge Ram Promaster. Um, the specs of the vans are all a little bit different, um, and I know that a lot of people advocate for the Ford slash Dodge Rams over Mercedes because Mercedes are expensive, and Mercedes engines and everything to do with the um, like guts of the vans are temperamental and can only be worked on by Mercedes people. Um, so we can't really take our van to your local auto shop if something goes wrong because all the parts are specialized to Mercedes. It's kind of like Apple versus like PC or Android or anything like that. Um, Mercedes like built their own stuff to put in their cars and they're the only people that can work on them. Um, so why do we go with Mercedes? big thing is that we are not going to keep this van forever. Um, our plan when we got it was to live in it full time for maybe two years. Um, that's always evolving, um, but a big thought was to get it f new for resale value. Another big reason to go with Mercedes is because they had just come out with these gas models. Um, so our van is gas, it's not diesel, um, and you can't get that in Dodge or in um, the Ford. And I thought that that was, again, um, kind of a good, I guess, like, we were just thinking about maybe, like, with our resale, like, who our target client might be in reselling our, reselling our van. Um, and I thought that gas was more appealing. It was certainly more appealing to me. Um yeah. And then I think the last reason is because the Mercedes offers the most amount of length in a van. So our last question is, when and how did you both know that you liked girls? I am kind of questioning my own sexuality at the moment. So thank you so much for this question. I love it. Very honest and I'm really glad you asked. Yeah, definitely. Well, I probably had a few crushes on girls in college that... I didn't exactly know what they were at the time. I was raised very conservatively and was definitely always intending to marry a guy. Um, I dated a few guys, not really like, super into them, which is maybe <laughs> also a sign, but that's okay. I met you in college. Yeah, you were always really cool and gave me that same feeling of like, I'm just not going to be around you right now because, oh, I remember. <laughs> I remember somehow got roped into intramural soccer, which I do not play soccer or anything else that requires coordination. And I convinced you to take my spot for me because you play soccer. And I think that's how that happened. Um, and you did. And I just remember 
this is maybe like bad reflection on you, sorry, but you were like upset about something and I was like kind of annoyed. Super competitive. Super competitive probably, You, I don't know. But I remember thinking to myself, I would never date her. And then I was like, what a funny thing to say to yourself, <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> oh, straight Jessica. <laughs> what a funny thing to say to yourself. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You told me that you were dating a girl, and you asked how I felt about that, and I said that was fine with me, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, then I was I was pretty much very aware of you all the time after that, and we went on spring break together, I got roped into going on spring break with you and some friends, and I was like, I'm sleeping in the other room, <laughs> and... Um, you roped me into rooming with you guys, and I was like, oh, well, this time I'll, I'll take, I'll, I'll room with you. And then that, that's how it started. Ugh. You just transitioned right into our relationship. Well, you are how I realized my sexuality. There we go. There you go. Yeah. This face right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, my answer is, like, kind of similar to Jess's, um in regard to looking back now, um, it's easy to see certain things that happened in high school and in college that I'm like, oh yeah, like I definitely was interested in girls, but I didn't know it at the time. I had no idea that that's what was going on or that, you know, that's how I was feeling. I didn't know how to express that. Um, yeah, so it's, it's clear to see that now. Um, but, I mean, ultimately, I um, didn't pursue anything with girls um, until, well, I was in college and a girl who I knew I was friends with and was out um, as being gay um, told me that she was interested in me, um, which kind of opened my eyes to figuring out what I was interested in and who I was interested in. Um, and then the following year... Um, I was becoming good friends with someone else and she told me that she thought she was interested in me as well. Um, and we started dating. It was the first time either of us had ever dated someone of the same sex and that went horribly, <laughs> went so bad. Um, just because we were trying to figure ourselves out, figure out if we were okay with this because, um, we were both conservative, um, and yeah, trying to figure out relationship and all of these things at the same time, which just ended very poorly. Um, and then a couple months later, um, Jess and I got together and yeah, um, it's just been a journey of us being together, um, and figuring out, um, ourselves kind of along the way. Um, so neither of us had like a moment or I would say like came out as being bi or gay or anything before our relationship. Um, us like being public with our relationship was the way that we told our friends, told our family, you yeah. know, it was, Hey, this is who I'm with, not, Hey, this is who I am. Um, That's so, so true. yeah. Um, and it wasn't until like a year into our relationship that we told a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, so our story is different. Everyone's story is different. Um, I would say if you um, are, you know, questioning your sexuality, I think we both believe that sexuality is something that's fluid, that it's a spectrum, that everybody falls somewhere on it. It's not black and white. Um, you can be whoever you want to be and be interested in whoever. Um, things don't always make sense. Um, and that's you know, okay. And that's okay. And yeah. I think that... Um, you know, if you ever want to, if anybody ever wants to talk to us about this topic, like, please do. I wish that I had someone outside of our relationship to talk to about this, um, because we were dating each other, living with each other and confiding in each other and trying to figure ourselves out like all together. Um, and obviously it's brought us to where we are but it was really difficult and there were some times that we didn't know if we were going to make it um yeah. we also threw that of, together we had a lot of painful experiences because of that as well not because yeah. of us but because of just 
trying to come out to different, like, it was, yeah, I wish we'd had some support. Yeah, so if you ever want to talk to anybody, um, I would encourage you to do that, to maybe, um, you know, talk to a stranger, talk to one of us, talk to one of your friends, um, a family member, somebody that you trust, um, and yeah, that would be, that would be my recommendation, um, to anybody that's, yeah, questioning that. And also just to like, I know it's really hard to be okay with who you are, um, in regard to anything, not just sexuality. Um, but I think yeah, you'll know how you feel um, when you're with someone, so go be with whoever, if they're a nice person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much. Thanks for all of your questions. Sorry that this is, like, super long-winded. If you're still with us, man, good on ya. Um, just make sure that you're all kind to each other and that we, yeah, work together and live a nice existence. I don't know. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Yeah. So, um, feel free to drop us a comment below if you have any other questions. We do our best to answer those. Um, we post here on YouTube um, at least once a week. And yeah, we'll see you all soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.